power still hasn't come back when we make our way downstairs. Tricky considering the stairs to the attic are a bit old. One misstep and anyone might end up slipping and falling. You're lucky if that's all that'll happen to you. With the stairs this steep, a broken neck is a likely outcome. Thankfully, Isabella's here to guide me through the darkness. She knows this place better than anyone after all, in spite of all the misfortunes it has brought to us. Careful! The floorboards over there aren't very sturdy. Right on cue, the same board I'm stepping on creaks and suddenly breaks to pieces, falling somewhere with a dull thunk. Oh shit. Scumbag wouldn't be too happy about that. Ow, my foot! See? I told you so! You never listen to me. I hope we won't have to run later. Because his foot now... Oh jeez, this is not going to end well, is it? They renovated the whole mansion and they can't even replace one tiny part of the house. Why don't you file a complaint to BRC then? I'm sure they'd be thrilled to hear it. You know it was such a rush job. Outside, the winds have... Intense... In yeah, intensified. Well, even from here, I can hear the guests battering the window in the attic. It makes you wonder why you up until now, the only person we have encountered from this house is the butler. Although, to some degree, that makes sense. He is in charge of running the place. Where are the other servants, though? In this storm, wouldn't anyone want to stay inside? A likely assumption if is they're all asleep. The route of taking doesn't really pass by the rooms they likely assigned as the servants' quarters. However, they have also heightened security. I brushed it off earlier, thinking that they'll be posted a lot closer to where the master's rooms are, but the second floor is devoid of anyone as well. As if every inhabitant of this place has suddenly disappeared overnight. More importantly, where's that scumbag? I don't like this. I don't like this at all. The fact that we're here right in the fucking middle of it makes me all the more queasy. And that feeling only escalates once we reach the landing and Isabella swings the door open. She pauses abruptly right in the doorway that I almost run into her. A look of confusion in her as she looks wildly around the place, wordlessly taking in her surroundings. With each turn and shift of her eyes, her shoulder only grows tenser and a look of apprehension slowly dawns on her. Isabella, what are you- We aren't supposed to be here. Sure enough, when I look up, we're standing right in the kitchen. Pots, pans, and everything. Oh. Oh, hello, hello there. In one corner, second Rebecca watches almost as... Um, wait, wait. A second Rebecca looks almost as surprised to see us. Nicole is also with them. Of course, she didn't listen to me even if I already extended the 15 minutes we're agreeing on. We've agreed on. Although, color and strength seems to have already returned to her, you know, for her to be able to stand it and assisted. Did she, like, eat some of their food? I hope she did. <laughs> the empty plate, yeah. The empty plate on the counter appears to have played a part in that. Good news, I guess. As for the other two, however... Relieved as I am that they have this, this sense to wait and now venture deeper into the mansion, I can't keep it. I can't help but roll my eyes up above them. Zack, I said four hours. I, I know, but Isabella asked and... Come on, bro, you know I ain't a very good liar. And it didn't even occur to you to stop her? We all tried, all right? She was out the door before we could say anything. And how did you guys even get in here? All three of them exchanged a look. One that I abrupt... I absolutely don't like. In the end, it's Isabella who speaks up, albeit with a bit of hesitation. We... we heard someone scream, Ash. It let us hear. Without a warning, the door behind us slams shut. We need to get out of here. Screw right. I need to get these people out of here. Lucky we're in the kitchen and we have the two ways out. The, the back door and the cellar offers. Except the hatch won't budge when I pull at it and neither does the back door. As if something has locked it firmly on the other side. 
Oh, I wonder what that could be. <laughs> Sack also gives it a few tries, but even with the big guy's strength, it won't open. There's a long bout of silence in which we all simply look at each other, like Clay sharing the same thoughts. We're trapped. Something or someone has intentionally led us here. Fuck. In that same moment, once realization dawns in, something shifts again. Blood. You never nook and cranny. Over every surface and in every inch of the floor. This time, unlike the first one I've seen, it remains and gradually the whole room begin to reek of that familiar metallic scent, sharp, suffocating. Around us, every object, including the cupboards, have started to rattle as well. The sounds from outside, foreboding rumble of thunder, and even the howling winds have begun to fade away, replaced by whispers, shouts, and cries of pain. Though inaudible, each beat and note bumbers ever crevice my head with vague images and sounds. There's no time to make sense of everything, however. I'm already shouting, fueled purely by adre adrenaline, barking orders and making a break for the door that leads to the next room, the dining. It should take us straight to the foyer, where the main door is. Move! Run! Right in front of us, the mansion has started to change, and we're in the thick of it. However, instead of the dining room, like it's supposed to open to, the bedroom welcomes us instead. An image that lasts only but a second, before blood begins to seep into the room. Filtering into the walls, trickling from every nook and cranny, everywhere, furniture shakes and every beam rattles. Before we can even step back from the horror gradually unfolding in front of us, the door slams shut. A loud thought bringing a sense of dread and chill uh, creeping up in each of us. Along with, it, along with it is another realization. The whole place is reordering itself. And with the door closed tight behind us, showing no signs of budging even through sheer force? There is no choice but to go forward and hope to all gods that it'll lead us to an exit. What the hell? Until then, running's the only thing can do, spurred by nothing but fear and a sense of de desperation to live. I just, I'm curious, I just wanna do the reading. <laughs> like I haven't been reading this whole time. Together, Ash and Isabella carefully made their way downstairs. However, instead of the hallway, the kitchen greeted them instead. Before they could understand what was happening, it slammed shut behind them and the whole ma mansion had started to shift. This is really strange. It's useless, Ash and Fred. But with each room we pass, it only becomes apparent that the house has no intention of letting us leave. It lured all of us here, and we've fallen for it. I was playing a little game with us, a sordid form of an amusement. For whom? <laughs> Their laughters are the only thing we can hear. With every hall we cross and door we slide open, the hope of finding an exit merely dwindles. The gun at my hip is useless here. I am useless here. Some fucking genius I am. Some fucking person to trust I am. All of those, they mean nothing in the face of the unknown. You finally figured it out. Huh, Ashton Frey? Just give it up. All of them will eventually die because of you. And you are going to die alone. Shut your fucking mouth. <laughs> you know it's true, though. All of it. It's why all you can do is tell us to shut up. You don't want to hear a single word, because you're already aware of it. You can't even admit it to yourself. Who's the coward now? But no matter how hard you try, you're not going to be able to save anyone. The 
more gruesome the place turns, the bleaker our chances simply get. Wails and screams fill our ears as we pass by, words from the time and people long gone, lays with nothing but pure agony, calling out, reaching out to us. Their voice is almost too real as if we're not the only ones trapped here. But there are other begging for release from this wretched place. Or maybe it's all just a show? A taste of what we will eventually be? Souls forever held captive in a never-ending nightmare? <laughs> mother! I've done it, mother! Take me with you, please! I can still hear her. She's here. with the curses? What it means for all of us? That little letter, not a morbid cry for help, but an invitation? A beckoning for unsuspecting souls to be dragged into this place of horrors? To be put under centuries and centuries of torment and agony? Suddenly, dying a painful death seems preferable. Enticing than ending up here, living a tortured existence. Or perhaps it's all the same. Still, hope warms its way into me, not a usual thing for someone like me. But after going through countless of doors and corridors, every little sign of hope I'm willing to cling on to, as long as it'll get us out of here. We're back in the dining room again. How long have we been running? How long since we left the kitchen? At some point, I've lost track of time. The windows bare, tight, and the sounds lifting in the air, nothing but shouts and shrieks, it's impossible to tell. Not that it matters when an end is in sight. Ooh. Shelves and furnishings bar the door, each stained with blood and gore. That if the situation isn't as desperate as it is, I'll find a different way out. But there's still a gap left at the topmost part of it. For a person to go through as long as you use the shelves to climb. It's an exit, all right. From here, I can spy the familiar walls of the foyer. Relief, only relief, washes over me. Although my legs have been strained, toppy all that running, and every bone and muscle in my body ache, there's only an, e an easing. A sense of tension rel relieving, relieving while energy back flows through me again at the sight of an end. No sooner in leading us out of it. Sack helps Mikola first, assisting her up and through the gap before giving a hand to both Rebecca and Isabella. The moment the ladies are in, I nod for him to go through. Go ahead. I'll watch your back. Surprisingly, he does that without any protest. Not that there is any need to. Sometime after entering this room, the whole place has calmed down. No wails, no whispers. The silence to def def defending, but I'm not letting my guard down until everyone's on the other side of this nightmare. Till everyone are safe. For all I know, this may just be a calm before another storm. Without further incident, however, Sack makes it to the other side and I'm following after him. However, all this hushes, I turn my back from it and climb up. It's a tight fit, but I manage to squeeze myself in. The unease remains, though. Maybe it's the adrenaline still coursing through me, or how easy everything has been after living through that nightmare. Fleeting as it is, but for some reason, something's still nagging at me. Call it a detective's instinct, or my training, or whatnot. I have a feeling something's going to happen and catch us unprepared. And consciously, before dropping down on the better side of this dream, my hand shifts to the gun at my hip. Instinct has never failed me before. My feet haven't even landed firmly on the floor when... Had I known there would be a party in my own home tonight, I would have opened a bloody bottle or two. Why, hello there. We've missed you. I guess. People these days, in my own home. Can you believe it? I feel so left out. A chill seeps into every vein of my body. All of a sudden... Every ache, every pain returns to me tenfold and my knees threaten to buckle at the sound of his voice. Though it appears friendly, I know it is anything but that. 
One does not spend investigating a man like him for over a year and holding a grudge against him for more without knowing everything about him. His quirks, his habits, I'm familiar with all of them. And right now, Luke fucking Wright is beyond pissed. Shifting my gaze upwards is nearly too painful knowing the danger. Not to me, but to those who have been lured in here by the curse. Oh my goodness, dude, calm down a little bit. We were just, you know, wanted to have a friendly shatter, you know? Could you maybe, like, treat us for some fika? No? Okay. Well, the handgun catches my eyes first, next to that smarmy, smarmy smile on his face while he holds Nicola, Sack, Rebecca, and Isabella at gunpoint. Sight enough to let a painful thorn up my throat. I've been too com complac complacent, too focused on other things that I've completely set aside. The fact a scumbag will not be too pleased to see us here without knowing our reasons. But even with those good intentions, curses, and ghostly apparitions aside, we're still trespassing in his home. The question is. If he's even aware that the whole of his household has somehow disappeared and he might be the only one here. Likely not. Fuck. Even with people he knows among the crowd, there's a significant effort in him not to simply shoot everyone in sight. And really, Daisy? Even you? What would Kylie say? Luke, this isn't what you're thinking. You have to listen to us. There's something going on here. Well, obviously, why else would people be trespassing in my home? What about little Lily over there, then? What's your excuse? Checking back if your clients are doing okay? Is that it? Is this what this is? We're doing good, by the way. <laughs> Best voice ever, I know. Sir, please! Oh, please what? Becca's right, sir. We need to get out of this place. You need to leave. Ta-ta-ta, a good enough excuse, darling. You people are the ones who need to get out of my sight. Don't worry, I might consider pressing lighter charges for the woman. Can't say the same for the rest of you. But really now? I swear the people of this city need to be taught the meaning of privacy! This is how you want to start the week! Why don't we just go with a bloody massacre if we want to surprise people in their homes, huh? Casually, he waves the handgun at them as if it's just a mere toy and his words are no threat. Save it is off on his. Nothing stopping him from pushing through with his words. Call me paranoid, but at the slight gesture, jeez, I draw my own and level it at him. Finger on the trigger and ready to release the safety catch in case things go south. Okay. <laughs> He's quick to train his own on me, though, and just like that, we're at a standstill. Now, now, feathers, manners. You're in no position to be pointing that gun at people. Why don't you put yours down first, and then we'll talk about manners. Oh, he talks back the gall. You know, your kind pisses me off so much. Shooting him right now would be so worth it. The way he stares at me like I'm a damn pest, but this isn't what I've come here for. I'm not a murderer. As much as I love him, I'm not the kind who will kill people in cold blood for my own gain or amusement. The law will bring him what he deserves one of these days. At the moment, however, we're all in the same boat with this curse, and he needs to understand that too. The longer we stand in here, the more time we're wasting and losing. Something we don't have much of. But how can I convince him? Oh gosh, am I going to make a choice? Am I gonna have a choice soon? Because I haven't had a choice in forever. <laughs> this scum is so full of himself. For us to hear the sound of his own voice more than those of the people around him, no matter how much sense they make. Probably only way I can make him listen is if I beg. No way in hell that's happening. Oh. Maybe I should elimin eliminate immediate danger first and disarm him. Oh jeez, are you serious? Are you freaking serious right now? Uh. <sighs> a 
Jeez. Just. Oh, I think I'm gonna beg. Oh, I really don't know. My life's not the only one at risk here, however. There's Zach. There's Rebecca. There's Isabella. Nicole's here as well. We're all unknowing victims to this fucking curse. I'm in no position to pick who to save and who I should simply let die. I suppose my pride can take a few hits and I can set aside my, my beef with this asshole. <sighs> Taking a deep breath. Slowly, I lower my pistol. Though still on the edge of and at ready, in case he does something, I do my best to assume a less aggressive stance. Listen, right. I need you to- Swallow your pride. You broke into my house, and somehow, somehow, you expect me to listen like a good little boy. Are you a bit touched in the head, Feathers? I'm not the one breaking laws here. Look here, fucker. If I wanted you dead, I could have done it so many times already. In fact, I can easily shoot you down right here, right now. And you won't be able to do a damn thing, even with that gun. <laughs> Suddenly he laughs, almost howling in fact, like I've just told him the best joke he's heard all his life. The only thing missing is for him to keel over and start rolling around the floor. Alright, I'll do my best not to sock him with the sorry end of my pistol. You have guts, Feathers! You have guts! Did you hear what you just told me? You've just threatened me inside my own house! My own home. You know what I'm thinking right now? In another lifetime, we would have probably gotten along well. He's right on that, at least. I might have ended up like him if I didn't have Professor Andrew or Rebecca at second Isabella. One mistake and it would have been too late for me. Would his laughter ring... Would his laughter ring all of those possibilities I could have lived, but I've never been given the choice. Only because I have other people with me, people who care. A sobering realization, but not so much when suddenly his shuckling stops. In two heartbeats, he marches towards me, grabs my collar, and aims his gun right at my head. Ashton! Oh my goodness. Like, my eyes are bleeding. Luke, no! Hey, now you two, I, I'm sure we can all talk about this first. At this distance, a slight flick of that finger on the trigger will be able to do more than kill me. What is it that you people really want with me? This is the second time this week, and I'm really getting weary of this little game. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Did the NCA send you to apprehend me, or has somebody paid you off to kill me? Which one is it, Feathers? Mind you, my arm's getting tired. Better answer quick if you don't want to beat the business end of this gun. I keep my eyes trained on him, in spite of the huge Freddy paws he poses right now, because if there's anything people like him, like us, prefer, it's honesty. You don't give that impression without keeping a solid eye contact. I'm not with NCA. I'm just here to help. There's something else in this house, and we're all in danger. You have to believe me, right? You need to let us go. You need to get out of here before it's too late. If you want to keep your sorry ass alive, You'll listen to people with more brain cells than you. Why, you insolent! His finger moves. But I'm prepared, my hand ready to reach up, disarm him, and knock him out. If I have to drag him out of this place unconscious to keep him from suffering the fates of every other person who has died from this curse, then so be it. However, before either of us can fire a shot or tackle the other to the ground, another voice echoes throughout the full year. A small little thing compared to this storm. Is it Kylie? A small little thing compared to the storm raging outside. It rings above it, nevertheless, causing all of us to stop and turn. Oh. Oh my, what, what? At the top of the staircase. On a right stance. What the hell? What? Leave her alone, dude. We didn't do anything. To make matters worse, worse, that thing's behind her, menacing, a rotting hand wrapped firmly around her neck. She looks like death. <laughs> Pale and shaky, 
eyes red with tears. We nearly don't hear her as she pleads. Lurk, help me, please. Outside, another streak of lightning flashes and a clap of thunder ripples across the sky. In death's grip. No, don't die. I think I think we we can save her. I mean, we can save her. She's in death's grip, but the, you know she's not dead. Okay, as if this whole thing can't get any more fewer than it already is. Oh goodness, what's gonna happen? No, what? Are you serious? But yes. But why? But no. A, a glimmer of hope. <laughs> but what? <laughs> 